It all starts with a man who claims to be a high-ranking official in the League of Evil, an organization that fights daily with the aim of exterminating humanity and claiming the Earth in the name of its own planet. However, today is this employee's day off, and he decides to go to a zoo to see the pandas, where a group of children notice him taking lots of photos of the animal. And in his mind the guy plans to proliferate the pandas even more after humans become extinct. And upon leaving the zoo, he walks calmly through the streets again, and immediately comes to mind situations and questions that a co-worker might ask if they see him, but he claims that he has answers to get out of anything. That being said, he believes his plan is perfect. However, However, he remembers that he still needs to be careful with the rangers, who in this case are a group of humans who insist on fighting their evil organization, and because he is on vacation, he states that he will never fight with the rangers that day. Then a young man calls him, and says that he is able to feel the evil energy coming from him, so the boy deduces that this guy is from the evil organization. Having said that, the young man introduces himself as the Red Ranger of Dawn, and challenges the man for a fight. However, he refuses, and asks the Red Ranger for a truce just for that day, and then he explains that it will be very bad to fight and scare the pandas there, and upon hearing this, the ranger states that he also really likes the pandas and the man notices that the boy has a ticket to the aquarium, so he informs him that he should be patrolling the aquarium, and then he explains that to get to the aquarium, he must get off at the ninth station from Yonono. Having said that, he says goodbye to the boy, but first the boy demonstrates his lack of sense of direction, and asks which way is to the station, and the man takes him to the station, almost holding the boy's hand, only to get rid of it as soon as possible. And when he resumes his journey, he deduces that the panda line is shorter now, and meanwhile the Red Ranger remains behind, confused, and wondering which train to take. And then the man goes to the zoo, and reinforces his idea of not fighting the rangers that day, after all, this is his day off, and after that he passes by a convenience store, and explains that there is it is possible to obtain various products, from food to hygiene products and magazines, and when he passes by a magazine with a panda on it, it immediately catches his attention, but he continues straight on, and is once again impressed by the variety of products that humans have access to, however, of all the products, he says that his favorite is sweet potato ice cream, but when he arrived at this session, that flavor was simply gone, and in its place there was only strawberry ice cream, and upon reading this, he believes that strawberry refers to a red fruit, while the expression machi, he has no idea what it is, and upon seeing it with such a strange golden hue, an employee wonders what happened to him. However, analyzing his facial features better, she notices that he was extremely devastated when he saw that the product he wanted was not available, and so he decides to take the strawberry ice cream. But he claims that the earth will fall into ruin if the ice cream do not satisfy your taste buds. And when passing your products on cashier, the girl assures him that that ice cream is good, and says that they started selling that brand recently, at which point he looks at her suspiciously, and she explains that she also really likes ice cream, and that's why she ends up buying all the new types of ice cream, ice cream when they arrive. And when she notices that he is talking too much, she apologizes, but he says that he will try the ice cream thanks to her recommendation. With that said, he leaves the place, and on the way he comments that he usually eats his ice cream when it is cold, due to fear, it melts. And as soon as he gets home, he turns on the air conditioning and goes straight to his ice cream, and when he finishes it, he approves the ice cream, and then comes back with talk of eliminating humans from that planet in the near future, in the future. However, he believes it will be a good idea to save that convenience store. And meanwhile, the Red Ranger goes to the store to do his shopping, and takes the opportunity to ask for information about where he should go, and upon seeing the map he showed, the employee explains that that place is in the neighboring province. And the next day, the employee of the evil organization notices that this is another one of his days off, and when he leaves his room and finishes his morning hygiene routine, he plans to wash clothes that day. But first he decides to go make breakfast, and while drinking his coffee, he states that it is his duty to make the most of his days off and for him his opinion is 100% correct. After all, he is an evil genius. And when analyzing the two worlds better, he explains that there are many creatures on Earth that do not live on their home planet, such as cats, and like them, dogs are also an unknown species to the people of their planet. And finally, comes the most important creature for him, which in this case is the panda, and as this species is still very unknown, at one point he decided to investigate more about pandas even on his day off. And then he goes to the zoo, and asks his boss for a refund for the time. After all, what he is doing can also be considered work, and going further he finds several species of animals besides pandas. And when he sees that there are also tigers and lions there, he finds it all very suspicious, and wonders what humans are planning by kidnapping the planet's largest carnivores. And when he thinks a little more about this situation, he deduces that humans use the zoo as a center for animal experiments, and then he states that letting down our guard with earthlings is indeed a very dangerous thing to do. However, he leaves this issue aside, and turns his focus to studies with pandas, but the man still claims that all humans will pay for having done this. And later that day, he leaves the zoo and writes in his report that he wants to go back there more often, and when he gets home, he carefully watches his recordings of the pandas, and then then goes to the supermarket. Then the Red Ranger crosses his path once again, and thanks him for helping him that other day. Having said that he offers him a box of panda cookies, and upon seeing the gift, the guy thanks him, and says that the boy understands very well how things work. And then the Ranger asks if the truce he asked for is still valid, and he just leaves him talking to himself, and heads to the market. And upon returning home, he explains that on his days off, rest is his main concern. And for him, rest days must begin with quality sleep and a delicious meal. But the most important thing of all, from his point of view, is to get away from work as much as possible. He remembers when he met the Red Ranger while out shopping 
something. And shortly thereafter, he also almost ran into a co-worker at the grocery store, but he quickly shook it off by getting out faster than a falling star. And with that, he was able to defend his day off masterfully. However, something makes him angry, and he claims that he worked all week precisely to be able to make curry on his day off. But when looking for the mild mixture, he only thought it was spicy. So he wouldn't be making any more curry that day. This is when his hatred comes to the surface, and he promises to end humans at that very moment. But a program starts on TV talking about pandas, and then he stands still looking at the television and states that thanks to cuteness, the world was saved more once. And after his next break, he goes to visit another place unknown to his species. In this case, it would be the shopping mall. And in the middle of his walk, two children stop him and mistake him for their father. But when he notices that he is not who they are looking for, the children go with him anyway and ask him to buy them ice cream. And when he sees that the children have not been taught not to accept food from strangers, he wonders how humans raise their children on this planet. However, he agrees to buy an ice cream for them, but says he will only buy the one in a cup. After all, they are safer than ice cream cones and don't fall as easily. But one of the boys disputes this and says that ice cream cones are coolest. And upon hearing this, he is convinced, but asks the children to be careful not to drop the ice cream on the floor. And then the employee notices that even the children's father thinks ice cream cones are better. But when the children get the ice cream, they thank him even though he is not their father. And when the employee discovers that the guy is a stranger to the children, she is terrified. And as they move forward, one of the children's ice cream soon falls to the floor, and then he starts crying. But the man tells him not to worry. After all, he and his brother will be reunited with their father soon. Then the other boy asks the boy to buy another ice cream for his brother, as that would make him more excited. And when they arrive at the center for lost children, they thank him for his help and say that they will see each other soon, but he knows that won't happen. And so he advises the boys not to stray from their parents from now on. And in his mind, he deduces that all humanity will have been extinct by the time the boys grow up. So he says he will make a point of remembering them. Having said that, he turns around and goes back on his way. And then one of the boys comments that he didn't expect the boy to be so good. And then the Red Ranger appears there to get them both. And when passing by the ice cream shop from before, the employee discovers that in fact that guy from before was not the children's father. So the ranger asks if they want ice cream. But the boys say their bellies are already full. And in addition, one of the boys suggests that they hurry as the blue and pink rangers will be worried if they take too long. And in the meantime, the employee of the evil organization stops by a bag store and decides to buy one with a panda design. And meanwhile, a boy who works in the evil organization is assigned to Earth, in which he claims to be proud to be able to work with the general, and the boy explains that they can't call him by his real name. And meanwhile, the general knocks his eye is on an upcoming public unveiling of a baby panda. And as for the boy from before, he's still stuck at work even after everyone has left. Then the general goes to the newcomer and says that he should have already left after all his shift is over. But the boy says that there is still work to be done. But when he sees what work it would be, the general states that these paperwork that can be handed over another day, especially because the land will not fall under their rule overnight. And the next day, the boy reports to the general that he went to the zoo to see the pandas and explains that he saw in his report that it would be worth making a second visit to the place. And what's more, the newbie gives him a box of panda chocolates. And when he gets home, he is outraged to discover that the panda is chewable. After all, pandas are too cute for that. And in the middle of the night, the general crawls on the floor in despair and states that he needs to have a pet panda, in which he explains that if he had a pet panda when he returned from work exhausted, his life would be happier. And then he travels in his thoughts and imagines hugging his panda when he gets home. But he finds himself in a dilemma with the expression esteem. After all, when humanity becomes extinct, his idea is to propagate pandas more and make them coexist with their species as equals. Therefore, he states that the relationship between him and his people with the pandas will be one of friendship. And due to the general's exhaustion, he imagines himself playing video games with a panda, venting about life, drinking and doing various other things that a panda would do, would never do. Having said that, he reaffirms his point of view again and says that the world will be much better after the extinction of humans. And the next day, he feels feels that his motivation to extinguish humans has been renewed. However, as he wants to spend the day at the zoo is great, he decides to take another day off, and then he wonders what color the panda's tail would be. So he takes out his cell phone and starts taking photos of the panda in the hope of being able to see the true color of the animal's tail. But when he notices that it has been there for hours, he notices the zoo employees staring at him. And after your cell phone discharges later after taking a million photos, the general spends three hours there watching the panda, and then the animal makes one more movement that leaves him in a state of alert. And then the panda finally shows the color of its tail, which in this case is white, and when looking to the side, the general discovers that the little boy was also waiting to see the color of the animal's tail, and then the two give a touch of hands to celebrate the discovery they made there. And after that, the general reports that he described in his report the long struggle he had to make this discovery about the pandas. And upon unraveling this great dilemma, he goes to the rabbit's interactive area. And as soon as he notices a rabbit with the same colors as the pandas, he immediately becomes interested, and then an employee invites him to interact with the animals, in which he realizes that the rabbits are also very beautiful, and the rabbits in turn make a circle near him. And upon noticing this, the employee comments to the general about the rabbit's liking him. And then that boy from before goes to that same area to see the rabbits and starts to caress one. And then he explains to the general that to pet them, he must follow the direction of the hair right in the center of the back. And as soon as the rabbit gets used to it, he can move on to the head and cheeks. And when he looks at him better, the general remembers that he is the same boy who discovered the color of the panda's tail with him. And then the boy comments that he dreams of becoming an animal doctor when he grows up. And upon hearing this, the general calls the child doctor and asks him to teach him how to pet rabbits again. And while stroking one of the rabbits, he states that the feeling of stroking an animal is extremely relaxing. And after that, they depend on each other, and the general plans to dance with
pandas and the boy after extinguishing humanity so that they can exalt this passion they have in common. But he soon gets rid of this thought and states that humanity must be extinguished in any way. And upon returning from another day of work, he meets the Red Ranger, whereupon the boy challenges him to a fight again and explains that now there are no pandas around, so this fight can happen without any problems. However, the general says that he has two cartons of eggs in his bag and that's why he won't be able to fight and so he asks the ranger to wait for him there. And upon returning, the general gives the boy an umbrella and some food. And in addition, he tells the Red Ranger the direction to leave, but the boy goes back to talking about their fight and then the general says he won't fight that day. After all, it was his day off. And the next day, he wakes up in the middle of extreme cold though and to motivate himself to get up, he watches some videos of pandas on his cell phone. But in the middle of it all, a co-worker Rooney starts calling non-stop and then the general just disconnects all his calls. But when he sees that he won't stop, he decides to answer the call. So the general tells him to say what he wants, otherwise he will disconnect the call in the next two seconds. In this, Rooney explains about an earthly monster that appears in winter and occupies human homes. And then the general asks if this monster is powerful and Rooney confirms that it is and says that it captures and devours humans. However, Rooney reveals that the creature also devoured him from the waist down. And upon hearing this, the general despairs and starts to go to him. So Rooney asks him to take gossip guides too, as this has to do with that monster. And then the general takes a box of gossip that he bought the day before and takes it with him. And when he gets there, he notices that the boy was actually fine. So the two start peeling all the fruit to continue with the plan. And after that, another day off of the general arrives and upon returning home, he meets a woman on the way with a panda-shaped cake and she tells her boyfriend that she bought it at a convenience store. And upon seeing this scene, the general becomes extremely uncomfortable, but he goes to the store to see this cake. And when he gets there, he remembers when he saw the girl splitting the panda's face in two and this makes him very tense. And then the employee talks to him about the panda dumplings and starts talking a lot until she realizes she's going too far and apologizes for it. And on another day, he returns to the same convenience store. And when he stops in front of the employee, she recommends other cakes for him. And then he leaves the store, whereupon the general tries the cake. And when he is delighted with the cake flavor, he returns to the store every day to buy other dumplings. Until on a certain day, he decided to go to the store to buy the panda cake, but they no longer sold this cake. And when another day off arrives, he goes to the market after having been to the zoo. And then he finds some Chinese dumpling dough. And the next day, he starts to prepare the dumpling, but the shape comes out the way he wanted. And meanwhile, Red Ranger does the same with his cake. And then the children explain that he squeezed the dough too much. Then the Blue Ranger goes to them and suggests heating the cake. But one of the boys says that the cakes become very hard when he heats it. And as for the general, he finally manages to make the perfect cake. And the next day, he walks the streets and finds a rabbit made of snow and leaves. So he decides to make his own rabbit too. And after that at work, Rooney and the rookie notice the general looking a little thoughtful. And upon leaving the evil organization, he returns to walking the streets on that snowy day. And the next day, the general returns for his day off. And as usual, he decides to go to the zoo to hang out with the pandas. But on the way, he passes a staircase and notices a man having difficulty carrying a bag. And so the general offers to help him by carrying his belongings. So they move on. However, he notices that you can't get around properly on your own either. So he offers you a ride on his back. And as they continue, you comment that he's really a very good boy, having said that they continue the journey in silence. And after that, the general wonders if that man had confused him with his grandson, and upon returning to his house, he lies down and starts trying to fall asleep counting pandas, until he finally falls asleep. In this he dreams that he is in a different place, and then that man from before appears dressed as Santa Claus, and says he is grateful that the general is there willing to help him again. And then he gives him a coat and pulls him to a place full of gifts, in which the general helps him with his work, and asks if you have ever thought about retiring, and he answers no, as his objective is to provide this service as long as there are children who believe in it. And you explain that even though it is a fairy tale forgotten by children when they grow up, it still lives on in the hearts of children who believe in its existence. And then he states that his greatest pleasure is to fulfill all the children's wishes, one by one. In which he explains that sometimes he ends up meeting good boys like the general, and then the man thanks him again for his help that day. And when he wakes up from this strange dream, he feels his muscles hurt from working in the snow. And even though he finds this very strange, he decides to just go about his day normally. And when turning on the TV, the general discovers that it is already Christmas time. And then the reporter informs that there are many decorative lights everywhere in the city and taking this into consideration. She deduces that there will be many people walking around the streets. Streets that day. And as night falls, a young man walks through the streets with a look of tiredness in his eyes. He explains that when he started working, he went straight to live alone. And on the weekends, the young man goes out drinking with his friends. And as for his days off, he says he would like to visit random places to have fun. But instead, he stays at home washing clothes as he doesn't even have time to cook. And so the young man resorts to snacks from the market. And as he walks further around the store, he comes face to face with the angry general. And when the attendant approaches, he asks if the Chinese dumplings had run out and she explains that the sales period for this product has passed. And then he comments that those cupcakes were his reward after a hard day of work. So the attendant takes him to the section of the new ice creams that arrive. And upon listening to the conversation, the young man notices that because he is always thinking negative thoughts, he never saw it as an afterwork reward. So he decides to buy a pudding and claims that he did well by giving himself this reward. And the next day, the boy returns to the convenience store. And then the attendant surprises him with several new products that arrived at the store. And meanwhile, the general walks through the streets drinking cherry tea that had just arrived at the convenience store. And the next day, he returns to the store and again the same young man finds the general and the attendant talking and then he deduces that the two get along well. So she takes him to see the new ice creams and starts talking about them and giving personal suggestions.
options, and then the general feels that the two new flavors must actually be good. And meanwhile, the young man stands in the corner wanting to try one of the specific ice creams, and then the general and the attendant give their opinion on which ice cream he should get, and when they talk, the answers don't match up. And then she apologizes again, but the general decides to get the ice cream she suggested and also the other ice cream. After all, the attendant never gives him bad suggestions. And returning to the young man, he wonders what reward to buy for his hard day's work, and then he decides to get an ice cream too. But the boy is unsure of which one he will buy, until in the end, he buys the same ones as the general bought it. And upon returning home, the general is undecided about which ice cream to try first. But he remembers that he will be off work, so he will have plenty of time for indecision. And the next day, he goes to a cafe in search of something called Latte Art. And when he gets there, he comes across a coffee maker and feels threatened by that unknown machine. And while the attendant prepares a customer's coffee with this equipment, the general is amazed at how the coffee maker works. And then the attendant explains how the coffee maker works, and the general discovers that there is another way to prepare coffee. However, when he notices the attendant making a huge noise while preparing his coffee, he becomes very suspicious again. And when his panda-shaped coffee arrives, he wonders how anyone would be able to drink it. And when he takes a sip of the coffee, he is shocked to see the panda slowly disappearing. And then the general states that this latte art drink is very cruel. But he starts to hear voices coming from the panda, where he says it's okay for him to drink it. After all, this is his destiny. So the general decides to drink the coffee in one go to avoid suffering as much as possible. Once this is done, he buys a lot of ingredients to make lunch boxes and desserts during the day. After all, starting next week, he will have to work several days in a row. In this, he plans to decorate his pudding and almond jelly with pandas. And to finish, he will serve these desserts with the panda dishes he found along the way by chance. And just arriving home, he faces his last obstacle of the day, the stairs, but he continues climbing step by step even with his fingers almost falling off due to the weight of the bags. But when he imagines himself putting the food on the panda's plate, he holds on and finally reaches the exit. And on another day, he decides to go see the cherry blossoms, just as earthlings love to do. But when he gets there, he notices that the flowers have already bloomed. And this leaves him slightly disappointed. After all, the general had prepared a picnic for this occasion, as he saw a reporter on TV saying that watching the cherry blossoms is much better with a picnic. And then he notices the presence of a little girl near the tree. So the two have a picnic together, but the general asks if the girl wasn't taught not to accept food from strangers, and she says yes, but she accepted it because she was very hungry. Hunger. In this he comments that he was there to see the cherry blossoms, but he ended up arriving too late to witness this event. And so the little girl opens her hand and lets several flowers fly from that tree to show him what the cherry blossoms are like. And after reflecting on all this, he states that this natural phenomenon is indeed very beautiful to see. And when he looks to the side, he notices that the girl has suddenly disappeared. And then, he reveals that he returned to have a picnic in that same place after that day. However, the general never saw the same girl again, but he believes he will see her again next year, when the flowers are blooming again. And meanwhile, a girl introduces herself as the Pink Ranger of Aurora, and in this she activates her transformation and states that she will defeat the League of Evil that threatens the Earth, as this is her duty. And then she informs that she usually goes out on patrol every day, and often ends up fighting against members of the Evil League. And when this happens, the Pink Ranger always gets the upper hand, sending her enemies flying. And after another one of those hard days, she says she is tired of wearing such a boring uniform, and of always repeating the same boring fighting style, having said that she remembers when she was at home watching a magical girl performance. And the Pink Ranger states that her dream has always been to be one of them. But then she collapses on the floor and says that she would never feel good wearing an outfit like the magical girls. And then halfway through, she informs her superior that she has already eliminated some more enemies. So now she will return to patrol. And then she sees a pamphlet on the wall about magical girls and tells herself that this is not for her. She. And when she gets home, she notices that her staff keychain from one of the magical girls has suddenly disappeared. So she deduces that her keychain fell off while she was shopping. And then the Blue Ranger comes to her and asks what Pink is doing. And when she remembers that Blue is the one asking this, she deduces that he would sound off if he found out that she likes magical girls. So she decides not to tell him anything and sends him to look for something that concerns him. Then the Blue Ranger comments that she is always very rude. And so she suggests that he go and see how Red is doing. After all, he will treat him with the politeness that Blue wants. And when he tries to follow her, he is stopped by the twin brothers. And one of them warns that the Blue Ranger should be more cautious when opening his mouth, having said that the boy punishes him, slapping him on the legs. And then the two follow Rosa and ask if she is going out somewhere. And she explains that it's almost time for the Black Patrol. And as for Blue, he can go get the red one. Because that way, she avoids causing him any more problems. And when she goes out on the street, she reflects on not having a single drop. Cute, just like Blue said. And moving further, she finds a cat lying on a park bench. And she tells him that it won't be long. And then she continues looking for something and notices that all the stores have already closed. Then Rosa goes to the police station and finally finds her staff keychain. And one of the police officers informs her that someone just left this item there. So he believes that the person responsible for it is still nearby. And then she simply leaves the police station and goes after that person. Whereupon the police officer tells her that the person in question was a tall guy in a trench coat. And in the meantime, the Red Ranger manages to get home without anyone's help. And upon seeing him, the twins immediately run to hug him. And one of the boys comments that if the Rose turns to evil, it will be all Blue's fault. So the Red Ranger asks Blue not to do any more things that make the children cry. And then he states that he is the one who is in trouble and not the children. After all, the brothers destroyed his legs with those slaps. And one of the brothers asks them to send the black guy to get the Rose. But Blue says that if the girl doesn't come back within 10 minutes, he will pick it up himself. And meanwhile, she continues looking for the person who left her staff keychain at the police station. 
and as she passes many people, she finally finds a guy who matches the information the police officer had given her. And as she pulls him by the arm, she asks if he was the one who handed over her keychain to the police. And the general confirms that yes, in which she thanks him. And he tells her to be careful not to lose his things again. And finally, he calls her Madam Magical Girl. And then Rosa stays behind without understanding anything and wonders if he knows the magical girl Angel Anima, at which the girl gets emotional and confesses that she always wanted to be called that and not a ranger. And on the way back home, she decides to keep her keychain better so she doesn't lose it again. And suddenly she bumps into Azul, who tells her not to walk around alone at that time of night. Then he asks if she found what she was looking for, and Rosa just says yes, but does not reveal what item she had lost, and after that he pulls her by her coat so they can leave quickly. And the next day, the general is off again, and decides to go to the zoo to see the pandas again, and on the way he remembers the last time he saw one of the pandas playing and eating a tree branch, until suddenly the panda waves at him, leaving him completely enchanted by all this cuteness. And returning to the present, he comments that when he arrived on land, he hadn't noticed that there were pandas scattered all over the city, and suddenly he passes by a poster of magical girls, and notices that there is a panda there, and when he sees it being portrayed with wings, he says that pandas are charming even with wings. And as he goes further, he arrives at a panda festival and gets a riff on a giant panda. And then a man explains that he will win a stamp every time he buys a panda product. And when he wins 10, he will win a prize. Exclusive. In this, the general notices that he will have an advantage because in addition to buying 10 panda products, he will also win a prize. And so he goes to a bakery and buys a bread shaped like a panda. And then he notices that there is also a bread panda shaped shape. And upon noticing his interest, an employee offers to cut the bread into the thickness he wants. But upon hearing this, he understands this suggestion as a terrible threat. But upon thinking a little more, he realizes that if he lets her cut the bread, he will have many more pandas. And after leaving the store with your panda bread, he goes to other stores. And in the end, he looks at his purchases and realizes that he only ended up getting food. And when analyzing his ticket, the general discovers that there is only one more item left that needs to be purchased for him to finally win his prize. And so he fills out the rest of his ticket and goes to a place to exchange it for his prize. Then a lady shows him a table and tells him to choose the prize. But when he tries to do so, he becomes indecisive and says that choosing his prize will not be an easy task. And finally, he ends up choosing a mug with a panda printed on it. Once this is done, he returns to his home, and on his next day off, he comments that because work is busy at times, he ends up neglecting household chores, so that day off he will take to do a general cleaning at home. And then he starts vacuuming the house, and explains that he learned that you should pull the vacuum cleaner, not push it, because that way the equipment works much better, and while cleaning the house, he takes care of the smallest details. But when vacuuming under the sofa, he ends up dropping his panda bear, so he washes his hands and goes to the bear to put it back where it was. Then the general opens his wardrobe and decides to keep everything organized. There too. And while he's packing his things, he notices that he's almost out of detergent too. And when he looks at the bottom of the wardrobe, he finds an empty panda-shaped chocolate box. And then the day when the newbie gave him these chocolates comes to mind when he discovered that he really liked pandas. And even though he was thinking about throwing those things away, he decides to keep the box. And then he goes back to cleaning the house through the balcony windows. And after finishing all the cleaning, he decides to go and rest, watching videos of pandas on the internet, until he comes across a recently posted video recorded by zookeepers. And while he's watching, his washing machine starts beeping, but he ignores it. And after a while, he decides to go to the park to enjoy the day's weather. And then he feels relieved to have put his clothes out to dry now. And when looking to the side, he notices a cat sitting on the bench too, at which the general is momentarily scared, and then comments that the charm and the way cats are few friends made them become the favorite pet of the people, humans. And for him, this preference of humans is a weak point. After all, if cats join his cause, they will be of great value. And to encourage him even more to do this, he notices that this cat's hair is very reminiscent of the of a panda. Having said that, he tries to start a conversation with the cat by talking about the weather, and as expected the cat simply remains silent. And then he notices that the feline isn't even looking in his direction. In this he feels ignored, and to change the situation, he thinks a little about what to do. And then he feels that perhaps he was rude to a species that has lived on that planet much longer than he has. And then he decides to rephrase the same question about the weather, but treating the cat like a real king. But the cat remains ignored, and only gives him a brief look. However, this is enough for the general to brag and feel respected. And suddenly the cat starts to meow nonstop. And upon hearing this, he notices that the language of that being is completely different from his, and also from the language of earthlings. And the general realizes that the cat didn't even understand a bunch of words. Random things he was saying, and yet he continued listening to him. And because the cat was so kind, he decides to respond in good faith to what the cat was saying. In this he tries to reproduce the cat's meow. And then the cat finally starts to respond to him, but with meows without any apparent meaning. And meanwhile, the pink ranger stands in the corner on her patrol, observing the entire hilarious scene. And on another day off from the villain, he returns from the market and stops at a park to enjoy the sun, in which two children, they comment on Oraheim and Haikoboshi, and say that they won't be able to meet, as it will soon rain. And upon hearing more from children's conversation, the general continues listening to the conversation, and discovers that these two people in question have arranged to meet. Meet on the 7th. And speaking of which, the girl remembers that her friend Habiki will be moving in on that very day, and the boy confirms that, that he will live with his grandparents, and so Aya arranges to say goodbye to him even with the rain that will fall that day. With that being said, the boy decides to go home, and then the villain goes on his way regretting not having discovered Oraheim and Haikoboshi's identity. And when passing by a shop, a lady hands him a Tanzaku, so he can write a wish. So he takes out his Tanzaku and deduces that asking for the downfall of humanity is a good option, and then he asks for two croquettes. And upon leaving the place, it is revealed 
revealed to us that he actually asked his friends Hibiki and Aya to meet. And in the meantime, the ranger, Red continues filling out several Tanzakus and seeing him so engaged in this. The twins remind him that he is already on his 12th Tanzaku, and furthermore, they state that it is correct to make just one request. In this, they suggest that he has a better sense of direction, but he explains that the blue one has already asked that for him. So the ranger, Red decided to just ask for everyone to be happy in general. And meanwhile, on a beautiful sunny day, the villain decides, enjoying his time at the beach, and then a boy starts to build a sand castle in front of him, and in order not to be left behind, he also starts your castle. And so they continue until the end of the day, until a wave hits the castles and ends them both in the blink of an eye. But the boy, he pulls him by the arm and asks them to build the castle again. And then the plane accepts the challenge and says that his castle, from now on it will be better than the last. In this, a man called Trigger presents himself as a high-ranking employee of the League of Evil, an employee who fights day after day for his planet. However, he regrets having to work alongside the general, as in his opinion, he does not have the basic qualities to be called a general. Having said all this, he continues walking alongside the general and again states that he has no leadership posture. And then the general shows all his maturity when he is impressed with a panda crate, but Trigger doesn't understand why, with so much excitement. And then he deduces that if his subordinates discover this side of the general, his reputation will go up in flames in the general. He tells him to hold the crepe so he can take a photo. And when taking the photo, Trigger observes him acting strangely with the crepe. And then he explains that he's sorry to eat the candy, and he's also unsure of where to start eating it. And upon hearing this, Trigger deduces that the general is trying to confuse him and asks him to eat the candy soon, because only then can they return to headquarters soon. So the general accepts his colleague's request and explains that he usually spends his days off like that. So he asks Trigger not to bother him when he is on his days off. And upon returning to the barracks, one of his colleagues notices that it is very difficult to see the panda's eyes, as well as the eyes of the general himself. Having said that, the boy leaves him to work alone, and then the general decides to speed up the work, to return home as soon as possible and watch a panda special on TV. And while he is excited about this subject, a mini demon comes to him and hopes that the general will be able to watch the program, but when it is time to leave he is surprised by an unforeseen event that makes him need to stay working late, and to make matters worse he needs to return to work the next day. In the morning, however, he states that he cannot sleep, and when he thinks a little about his lack of sleep he remembers that earthlings usually tell, you look to fall asleep, and then he decides to use that same technique, but counting pandas. And the next day he goes to work, but as soon as his colleague sees him, he notices that the general is more destroyed than ever, and so he explains that, counted more pandas than expected the night before, but upon hearing this his colleague is at a loss to understand anything, but the general informs him that the earthlings count sheep when they can't sleep, and then the work partner explains that they use sheep as a count because sheep's sheep sounds like sleep. And upon hearing the explanation, the general understands why this didn't work with pandas, and in the middle of the conversation he simply starts sleeping standing up and dreams, with 100 pandas around you as you gaze at the sky. And in the middle of the afternoon, the Red Ranger tries to escape from the general, but in the end ends up being trapped by his claws, but before he can, could finish it, a little boy witnesses the two fighting, and then the ranger asks the child to go away, and stands in front of him to protect him from the general. Then the girl from the zoo announces on the microphone that there is a lost child called Keitaro, and then the general informs the location, where is the lost children's center, and asks the Red Ranger to hurry up with Keitaro. Once that's done, the general goes to a store to admire the panda bears, and states that any object made from the image of this animal, it's very charming. So he starts squeezing the bears, looking for the ideal stuffed animal, until he finally finds the bear he was looking for. And after purchasing it, he returns home. And on another day of work, Rooney O.T. is thrown on the table and suggests that he go home. But the general says that you still need to finish the work. So your colleague changes the subject and informs you that there are three panda habitats in their territory. However, he believes that there is another one of these places. And upon hearing this, the general immediately becomes interested in the subject and asks where this place is. After all, if there really are pandas in this place, he would like to see them with their own eyes. And the next day, he goes to the place indicated by Rooney and enters a place looking for pandas, but when he looks around, he notices that his colleague was apparently mistaken and deduces that Rooney was just delusional when he passed for this place. However, he thinks it's best to do some research there to verify the veracity of what his friend said and then, the general takes a ticket to see all the park's attractions, and while interacting with all the park's rides, he continues to look for the pandas, but he can't find them anywhere, whereupon he sits on a bench away from the toys and criticizes the earthlings for letting children climb on such dangerous toys, and then he goes back to wondering what that strange place could be until a man sits next to him and notices that it's the general's first time there. In this he explains that the amusement park is the place where adults can become children again, and while he is distracted by the man's speeches, his grandson goes to the general and informs him that there are pandas in the toys too, and upon hearing, he is surprised at this, but ends up forgetting to ask the boy where exactly the pandas are. With that, the general walks around the place again, and Eifenschance when passing by a panda-themed store, but when picking up a keychain with a panda tail, he wonders about the color of the tail being black. After all, he thought it was white, just like he saw in the zoo that day. And observing the place further, he sees some pandas trapped in a kind of capsule, and soon becomes indignant at human cruelty towards pandas. And to save these trapped pandas, he starts buying them all, and in the end frees them. So his next mission consists of find black-tailed pandas, but when he looks everywhere, he goes back to square one and sits on a bench in the square to reflect on the black-tailed pandas. Then a girl 
girl goes to him to see if he needs help with something, and then he says he is looking for the pandas, and then, hearing this, she immediately decides to accompany him to where the pandas are. And when passing through a narrow corridor, the general deduces that the black-tailed pandas are just beyond that corridor, but at the same time. When he gets there, she introduces him to the panda cars, and the general is left unresponsive when he sees this strange thing in front of him, but he rides one of them anyway. And after meeting Rooney at work, he explains that the place he discovered was actually an amusement park, several, and then he presents Rooney with a mini panda car with a black tail, which he is confused about, as he believes. Also that pandas only have white tails, but the general claims that real pandas do in fact have white tails. And the next day, he goes back to analyzing the pandas, but this time he focuses on observing their different features, until one panda in particular reminds him of Trigger, because of the droopy eyes. But as soon as he thinks about it, he forbids himself from thinking about his co-workers on his day off. After all, anything that reminds you of work should be forgotten on these days. And then he goes back to taking a photo of the panda in front of him, and this makes him forget about his colleagues at the time, but when he returns to the work, he meets Trigger, and soon remembers the panda that looks like him, at which the general starts to laugh, leaving even more pistol Trigger with it. And while he sleeps, the general dreams Ofa graceful panda, drying himself after taking a shower, and then he stands still watching that scene, and the next day at work, he goes to his colleague to report the wonderful dream he had with his animal favorite, and upon hearing more about his colleague's dream, Rooney explains that dreams are a manifestation of the innermost psyche, depth of an individual, and taking this into consideration, he asks if something has occurred to the general, and he answers yes, because when watching a panda video, he sees a cub falling when trying to climb onto its father, and that makes him, leaves his heart racing with worry, and then to calm down he decides to go make a coffee, but when he picks up his cell phone and, hearing the news that the pandas would be taken from the zoo, he despairs again. Having said all that, he explains to Rooney that the damage from this discovery was severe, as his knees still hurt from the fall he had upon hearing such barbarity. Then Rooney changes the subject and decides to play a game with the general involving tangerines, and in the end he wins by taking the segments and replace the shell in place. In this Rooney disdains the general, but he surprises him by giving him a panda shape to tangerine segments. But in order not to be left behind, Rooney continues doing his tricks with the fruit, and the general confesses that his colleague actually, it's good with the tangerines. That being said they decide to do a final round, and Rooney gives the fruit a kokatsu monster shape. As for the general, he plays an earthling, and in the middle of the game, Rooney notices that they ran out of tangerines, but the general states that he already expected that, and then brought an extra box. Then they start to eat the other fruits that they use to shape different things, and then Rooney wonders, if the rest of your colleagues would like to learn how to make these sculptures with the fruit, a co-worker said this, goes to Trigger to give him some documents, but he soon gets scared when he sees a strange animal in his lap. Co-worker, whereupon the employee explains that it is a sculpture made of tangerine, taught by Rooney, and on another day, Rooney, goes to the general, so they can exchange Christmas gifts, after all this is a very common practice among earthlings, and as they, are studying them, they must learn more about their customs. Having said that, he leaves for a meeting, and tells the general more details about this fraternization of humans, and when leaving work, the general continues thinking about this story of giving gifts on a specific date, and then, he dreams about Santa Claus again, and asks him more about the act of giving gifts, and how to do it right. And Santa Claus claims that he must just get a smile from the person who will give it, because by doing so, both the person how happy he is, after all knowing that you pleased someone can also be considered a gift. And after this brief dialogue, he wakes up from his dream, and then goes to work with his gift for Rooney, who in turn, also brings him a gift. So Rooney suggests that they pass this tradition onto all employees at the level. But for now, they decide to just eat the panda-shaped tangerines they made. And Iteo Trigger goes to them, but the general only gives him a panda candy, as the panda-shaped tangerines are already finished. And meanwhile, one of the twins notices that there are presents in his house, and soon wakes up his brother to see it too. And then Sara asks to open the presents immediately, but his brother states that it's still nighttime, so they must do this only later. And the next day, they wake up and finally open their presents, and meanwhile, the general starts a meeting with several of his clones, and explains that the agenda is the creation of an alliance with the pandas, which will be done after they are finished with humans. However, some of his clones protest this, and suggest that the alliance be made with other types of bears. In this, a general conflict of ideas begins, and everyone asks to have their opinions heard and validated, but the general may note that that discussion between your clones won't get them anywhere. In this, he states that he also likes cats, so he will teach them how to use feline charm, but when they hear this, the clones simply don't accept the general's idea, but he continues even without their will. And after another day of sleep, the general wakes up to his panda alarm clock. And when you notice a cat passing frequently on the market street, the general decides to go after him, in which he reaches the owner of the cat. And when he notices the animal being so affectionate with its owner, he notices that cats are animals that are easier to bond with, so the black ranger decides to continue his journey. But before leaving, he hands over a package of food to the general. And after that, the man returns to his base, and is soon welcomed by the twins, and then the ranger questions why the boys are still awake. And they explain that to see him, they need to stay up late. With that said, the brothers ask for the black ranger to take them to bed. And when putting them to sleep, the ranger remembers again the cat he found on the street, and says that the animal reminds him a lot of the cats. Two brothers, and as for the general, the ranger notes that he actually usually stays close to the convenience store as well as, the report said, and on another day, the red ranger starts
starts a fight with the general again, and after taking him down with his lasers, he celebrates his supposed victory, but the general gets up and defeats him with a single blow. So he returns to base completely exhausted, and by dreaming about the fight, he guarantees that he won't lose next time. Having said that, the Red Ranger wakes up and soon sets out to do a local patrol, but Blue stops him, and in the meantime, the one elderly couple delivers a machi to the general, but when biting into the food, he notices that the machi has a composition that makes it more elastic, and he begins to suspect that it was some kind of weapon disguised as food. But when he manages to eat the machi, the general is enchanted by the taste of the food, and begins to eat several other types of it. Same food. Once this is done, he returns home with a full belly, and begins to work frantically, until he notices his slightly sore body, and decides to take a break to rest. And then the general remembers that he has an ice cream waiting for him, but before he goes to get it, he decides to make that lay coffee, and after that, it's finally time for ice cream. However, he starts to receive notifications calling him to take care of it. An urgent matter. In this, the general sits down at the computer and starts solving the problem as quickly as possible, and when he finishes, he comes across with another urgent matter, making it impossible to take a break from work. And after some more time, things finally calm down, but when looking to the side, the general discovers that what he wants is still, it's soft, or rather, melted. So he starts to get irritated seeing his ice cream in that state, and then his anger causes a mini earthquake, which is not very atypical in Japan. And when he notices that only the edges of the ice cream have melted, the general becomes calmer, and when night falls, he ends up going to dinner, earlier than usual. And this makes you hungry before the day is over. In this, he remembers cup noodles in front of him, and feels like he shouldn't eat that at that time, and then he's torn, between eating, or not eating the cup. But in the end, he ends up giving in, and decides to eat that processed food anyway. And when reflecting on this, the general notes that his determination to end humanity is very weak, and after another time, he remains awake until 11 p.m., and feels that it would be a good idea to take a shower before going to sleep, but his lazy side rejects this idea, and instead he continues on his cell phone looking at pictures of pandas, and then he starts hallucinating, and hears the panda in front of him criticizing him for skipping the bath, and then the general decides, obey the orders of the panda god, and as his body warms up, he starts to feel more sleepy, and decides to just roll over without even brushing his teeth, but the panda gives that basic stare at the general, and then he returns to the bathroom and brushes his teeth under free spontaneous pressure, and after, so he turns on the dryer to fix his wet hair, and suddenly he remembers last week, when he decided to make an instant meal with the microwave, in that the energy suddenly drops, and upon thinking that it was an enemy attack, the general goes out into the street to hunt for the threat, however, he is only met with silence, but continues looking for the supposed enemy anyway, and in the end, he realizes that his enemy was just the power circuit breaker butt, because when he put the lever in position, correct, everything returns to normal, and now in the present, he decides to be more cautious, turning off the air conditioning and the TV, so the power doesn't go out again, once this is done, the general goes to his bed, and thanks the panda for making him take care of himself before going to sleep, because with, so your day was 100% productive, and in the meantime, the Black Ranger returns to interact with that same cat from before. And on another day, the Pink Ranger decides to go be chocolates, to deliver to your colleagues on Valentine's Day, and arriving. In a candy store, she chooses the chocolates according to the personality of each of the Rangers. Once this is done, she remembers to buy chocolates for the twins too. But on the way, she finds some magical girl-themed chocolates, and decides to buy them for herself and Pink remembers. That day when the General found her magical girl keychain, and then she regrets not being able to give her a chocolate. He too. And after arriving home, she hands him blue chocolate, and he notices that she is usually very attentive with very important things, random, and then he decides to eat the chocolate right away, and seeing it pink reminds him that he didn't thank her, and later, the rangers decide to go buy some chocolates to thank the girl for her kindness, and when they arrive at the center, from the store, they decide to split up, and the twins comment to Blue that strawberries and baked sweets are in fashion that year. Having said that, they also separate, and after two hours have passed, the boys notice Azul very thoughtful, and he in turn states that, Rosa will complain about her chocolate, regardless of what it is, so this is making him uneasy, and then, the twins tell him to stay calm, as they will inform her that he hasn't stopped thinking about her for a second, but at the same time, hearing this, Blue asks them to never say that to Pink. So the twins decide to go look for the Red Ranger, after all he's already lost again, as usual, and in the meantime, Azul begins to remember his past, and explains that since he was little, his stomach started to hurt when he was anxious about something, until one day his mother gave him a device to control anxiety, and as for his father, Blue explains that he was a ranger, but on a certain day, he simply didn't come home, and the ranger appeared instead, darkest of all, and so the boy finally became the Blue Ranger of the morning. And as for the guy in black in front of him, he was known as the Deluculo Black. In this, the same guy informs the boy that ranger powers are passed down from generation to generation, and because of this, they always live together in the same base. And upon meeting him, Blue describes the Black Ranger as a guy who talks complicated things, and soon after the Pink Ranger does too, goes to him, and Blue describes her as a rather sassy girl with tacky glasses. Having said that, he remembers the birth of the twins, who in this case are Green Rangers, and the Black Ranger explains that Sora is a girl, unlike Muji, who is a boy. And upon hearing this, Pink decides decides to call the children by their names instead of Green Ranger, and then Black states that they should do things that way, after all they are two Green Rangers. However, he notes that the brothers have very weak energy, so they must resonate with as much energy as possible. They can, and as for Blue, he decides to use that to his
his advantage and says that if he can just study at home, he will be able to resonate. Even more your energy and your brothers. However, the Black Ranger explains that they should go out and make friends outside the house, after all the Ranger team exists, precisely to protect Earthlings, and upon hearing this, Blue tries to give a shout out, saying that the Rose could now be considered your friend. However, the Black Ranger explains that his colleagues off team don't count, and in the middle of his explanation he ends up falling asleep and after. A few months after the birth of his brothers, Azul reports that his routine was basically going to school and taking care of the twins, and as for the Black One, he remained on his patrol, and the doctors commented on the Black Ranger and his mission, until, when suddenly another employee appears to report the twins' disappearance, so the Rangers mobilize to find the children, and in the middle of it all, Blue has a mini fight with Hink, and then she asks him if he's still mad about what she said, before, about them not being friends, in that Blue says he doesn't care what she says, after all the girl always says things, unpleasant, and Rosa, in turn, decides to be his friend, but Azul claims that he sees her more as a younger sister, and in the middle of the conversation they, they are interrupted by the twins, who use their energy to merge, and the two begin to call for their parents, and upon hearing this, Blue explains that their parents died, however he guarantees that everyone on the ranger team will take care of them, the best way possible, and as for Pink, she states that they will be like brothers, and upon hearing this, the twins undo the fusion, and after that, Blue takes away, one with Rosa's face, and reminds her of, when the girl had said that they are family, but Rosa claims that he was the one who called her sister first. Blue comments that she apparently doesn't like being a ranger that much, and Pink confirms his deduction, but doesn't reveal it. What your real objective would be in life. And in the middle of their conversation, his stomach starts to hurt, and then the black ranger notices that that day was really very agitated, and to reward them, he buys them both some dried squid, and while they eat, he explains that the twins' energy it is weak individually. After all, they both share the energy of a single ranger. And speaking of the ranger formation, Rosa notes that for the team to be complete, they only need to find the Red Ranger. So, Blue asks where this Ranger is, and then Black deduces that he might not have even been born yet. As for the Blue One, he believes that the Red Ranger is lost out there, having said that he goes back to venerating his father, as he thought. The fact that he is the son of a manager is a plus, but on the other hand, Azul states that he was never interested in following in the same footsteps of your father. And after a while, Rosa goes to him with the twins to ask him for a favor, and as for the Black Ranger, he explains that the entire, the old generation of Rangers has passed away, so he was in charge of restoring the team, but when he had to deal with children and newbies, he noted that this is not such an easy job. However, he goes to the graves of his loved ones and promises to fulfill his duties as a ranger. And the next day, a boy watches intently the girl with the cherry tree and explains that she usually only appears when the cherry trees are blooming. And while watching her, he notices a big uncle approaching her. So the boy throws a stick him and calls him. And when the general approaches, the boy asks him to deliver a triangle of sand to her, after which he returns to the boy and says that she liked the gift. And upon hearing this, the boy is happy and goes back to making his sand molds. After returning to the boy again, the general hands him a corded telephone, and when the boy puts his ear to the can, he hears the girl thanking him for the triangle, and then he informs the general that this is the first time he has heard the girl's voice. Girl, and besides, he notices that soon the cherry tree petals will fly. So the boy decides to take action, and tells her that he has been watching her for a while, and as for the general, he decides to go. Although, after all, he has already helped the boy a lot, and upon returning to the tree where he always saw the boy, he notices that it no longer, it's more there. Then the general walks up to the girl in the cherry tree, and sees her trying to talk to the boy on the cord phone, however, she doesn't have an answer, and says she misses him, and meanwhile, the boy notices that the cherry blossoms have fallen, sooner than he expected, and when he looks at himself, he notices that it is turned into a public bench, so the general goes to him, and asks what the boy, is doing there, and he responds that it is turned into a bench now, having said that the boy goes back to looking for the girl from, cherry tree, and then the general informs that she has already dispersed, and upon hearing this, the boy regrets not having arrived sooner, in that, the general says that there is no certainty that it will bloom next year, but still the boy says he is fine about that, and states that he will wait as many springs as necessary, necessary until he can see her. And on another day, the general hears something on the way home, and deduces that it is a cat moaning from the cold, and upon finding the object responsible for the noise, he discovers that it was actually a toy cat. From this he deduces that that be not of the earth. And when he says this, the cat talks to him too, and calls the general human. So he decides not to get involved with this cat. Strange and leaves, but soon returns, and leaves his umbrella with him, to protect him. And the next day the general comes back to see how the cat is, and asks what he is doing there, and the cat says he is, just waiting for his battery to run out, and then the general decides to leave, and as for the cat, he remembers that his creators were thinking about abandoning him as he wasn't being as useful. Whereupon the general returns to the place and puts the cat to charge, and when it realizes that it can move, the robot simply attacks it. However, its bites don't even tickle the general, so the cat realizes that it really is useless and deserves to be discarded. And after that, the general brings cat food to the robot, and he in turn explains that he cannot eat food, therefore the cat begins to distrust him, but the general makes it clear that he was just worried about letting him starve. That said, he remembers the conversation he had with his colleague a few hours earlier, where he had asked the general to warn, in case you find any suspicious objects. And upon hearing this, he doesn't understand anything. And then Rooney explains that there are other races besides them targeting the Earth, and he believes that there is already some enemy equipment on the planet. So the general
Carl asks why he hadn't said that before, and Rooney explains that he doesn't yet have enough evidence to make a report. And upon hearing this, the general proposes to help his friend, but states that he will charge overtime if he finds the object outside of your working hours. And after thinking about all this, he comes to the conclusion that the robotic cat next to him is the suspicious object after all this. The same cat bit him out of nowhere even though he wasn't hungry, so the general decides to take the cat to HQ as a specimen of study. With that said, the cat finally finishes carrying, and then the general begins to analyze the robot's every action to see if it is threatening an attack, but in the end he deduces that this cat is just a pet from some robotic company, and even though he discards any danger, he decides to take the cat to HQ. And there the general reveals that he is from another planet, and apologizes for having deceived him all this time. So Rooney goes to him too, catches the cat, and says he will find out how dangerous the robot is, and when Rooney runs to the exam room, the general, you try to stop him to say something, but he continues anyway. And after an hour, he asks Rooney about the exam, and he says it will take another two hours. However, Rooney makes it clear that the robot is apparently harmless, just as the general reported. And after he finally finishes the analysis, he calls the general into the room, and when he gets there, the cat jumps into the general's lap in that. Rooney explains that he checked all the robot's parts and resources, and finally cleaned it. Once this is done, he states that he already has all the necessary data regarding the robot cat, and when he notices that it does not present a threat, they decided to reassemble it. At which the general asks what will happen to the cat now, and Rooney says that this will be at the discretion of the executive council. But upon noticing that the robot apparently likes him a lot, Rooney suggests that the general take him home. And meanwhile at HQ, the general continues with his work, and then the cat explains that it was developed as a weapon against earthlings, however he is a defective product. In this he questions himself about the purpose of his existence, and, as he reflects on this, Rooney comes to pay him a visit. And when calling him by his registered name, he realizes that he needs to give the cat a nickname to facilitate communication between them. And then Rooney decides to let the general choose the nickname. So the cat asks if he will have any responsibility if, when the general takes custody, and Rooney says no, after all they are on a probationary agreement, because their goal is to keep the cat from causing problems, and, just in case, they installed a GPS on it. So the cat asks Rooney to dismantle it, but he says he can't do that. And suddenly the general appears there, and gives the cat some bed options to choose from, and then he leaves the place. In this, Rooney explains to the cat that the general intends to take him to his house, so he should just accompany him. But Rooney assures him that he can deactivate it if he doesn't adapt to life with the general. So they go home, and he puts it on. The cat to sleep in a panda bed. And the next day, the general returns to the boy on the bench, and notices that the girl with the cherry tree didn't bloom that year, and, upon realizing this, the boy starts to cry, but the general reminds him that he himself had said he would wait as long as he needed, was necessary. Having said that, he hands the boy two rice cakes and leaves, whereupon he tries to start a conversation with his friend, offering a rice ball, and furthermore, he comments about humans being slightly strange, and while talking to himself he becomes, remembers the corded telephone, and wonders where that object is. In this he makes it clear that he would like to have talked more to her over the phone, and as the days go by, several petals began to appear, and with that the boy became more hopeful, as he would be able to talk and confess to her faster than he imagined. And upon noticing that the boy still hasn't declared himself to her, the general wonders what the two were talking about on the phone, and then he advises the young man to rehearse the words he will say when declaring himself to her. With that said, he leaves the place once again. However, he presents the boy with lunch for two people, and while waiting for her, he begins to rehearse his statement until the girl finally appears, and meanwhile the general decides to go to the park to watch the story unfold, but when he gets there he finds the two of them far from each other. Another, in which the boy takes him aside, and asks him to say something to the girl for him, and then he passes the message, and tells her that the boy thought the color of her petals was very beautiful, and then the girl asks him to. The general tells the boy that she also finds the color of his leaves interesting. Then they continue talking in this way, until suddenly the boy takes courage, and declares himself to her directly, and the next day, the general walks down the street, and when faced with the presence of the Red Ranger, he decides to hide to preserve your day off, and when trying to escape the Ranger, he knows notices that things are not going so well, as apparently the boy is managing, detect him, and then he starts trying to escape by going to different places, but the Red Ranger continues to chase him, and finally the Ranger manages to find him. But instead of fighting, he decides to deliver a gift to the General, to thank him for all the times he helped him, and when he saw this, the General doesn't understand anything, as he thought Red was trying to start a fight, but the Ranger says that he was lost and ended up seeing him by chance, so he leaves. And when he gets home, Rosa shows him the other Rangers sleeping in the same position, and then she asks him to lie down with him. Once they did that, Pink started taking photos to send to the Black Ranger, and when he took out his cell phone to see the photo, he was informed about a meeting that will take place in 10 minutes. And meanwhile at HQ, Rooney informs the general that the preparations are complete, and everyone goes to the Rangers, and Red states that their job is to defeat all the members of the Evil League. So the general goes after him, and as for the trigger, he decides to attack the Black Ranger. As for Rooney, he stays away just taking notes and stops the report. And the next day after the fight, the general wakes up and goes to do his basic morning activities, and when preparing coffee, he comes back to TV to watch documentaries about pandas. As you usual. And after that, the general passes by the zoo and panda stores, and in the end ends up in the cafeteria drinking a coffee shaped like a panda. Panda 2, once this is done, he reminds us that he is a high-ranking official in the League of Evil, whose job 
is to claim the Earth in the name of his home planet. But since today is his day off, he decides that he won't fight any rangers for now. And this was another video. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe, leave your like, and see you next time.